So, we are gradually getting deeper and deeper into finance and uh, looking at the type of people who have really enrolled for the course, getting some one or two mails from them. I uh, have decided to, if you, if you look at the course format, I have decided to change it a little bit and take you slightly more into finance, so that you get the finance flavor. So, here we are going to start getting more deeper into the tools for mathematical finance and then we will end our show with two last lectures, which, be, which would be on uh, the Black-Scholes formula for pricing a European call option. Of course, then in we will try to describe what is a call option and etcetera, etcetera and, and what are the things, how to go ahead with the things. So, we are now going to talk about a Ito integral for a general integral. So, this is no longer a simple process, right. It is a, it is essentially a general one. If you look back and go back to the sections on expectation, then you will see we have tried to define an integral in the following way that if you want to define an integral of a random variable defined over a probability space, then this has been defined as a limit okay, of these integrals, limit over where y is simple. and y is less than equal to x. So, it, it is not, it is a limit, but I sorry, it is it's essentially not the limit, but supremum, because we are taking y less than equal to x. So, the integral of y is less than integral of x and then you are taking the supremum, but it is a limit in some sense. We can also put it in a limit form. So, this is what you have learned. So, the same idea should come here. So, as you keep on changing the partition of the interval 0 to t, for each partition you can define one particular sim, uh, simple process and each as you make the partition smaller and smaller, the simple process will actually go closer and closer to the, suppose this is your actual process up to t. Now, you have divided into say this is T naught which is 0, T 1, T 2, T 3, T 4, V T 5 and so on, and this is T 6. So, what you do is you define one value here, maybe then you define another value here in this way. Sorry, from T two. Maybe like this. From T three might be like this. T three to T four, something like this. From T four, it might be just like this, and from T five it might be just like this. So, these are very crude approximations, very bad approximation, but as you make the things smaller and smaller and smaller, these partitions, your approximations would start becoming better and better and better. So, what do I mean by that, that a simple process delta n t, so I will have a sequence of simple process delta n t, each process is simple. So, if I take this sequence of simple processes as n goes to infinity, 
we expect that this simple process, simple process should somehow be same. Of course, you have to define what is the meaning of this sameness, same as this continuously varying process delta t. So, these are discrete processes whose limiting form is this continuous process delta t, continuous not a continuous process, this continuous process here, but okay, continuous more continuous than the things that we are talking about part, the parts are continuous, so they are continuous parts. So, there is nothing like every step is discrete. So, it may not be just a constant function on the interval, it could be just varying. So, we expect that this is somehow what we will get, but what is the meaning of this sameness? How do we talk about this sameness? In probability theory, the sameness is spoken in a slightly different way. It tells you, I expect that the distance between these can be made smaller and smaller and smaller. So, it tells me now each of these So, what we expect is the following, I will tell you what, what, what it means. So, Shreve tells us that if by these functions, simple functions coming to delta t, it means that is what it means that over the all the sample paths, if you average the square of the distance. So, this is nothing but the L 2 norm, if you look at this integral, so in the terms of the function this is nothing but delta n minus delta whole square in those who know about the l2 space is a space of all square integrable measurable square integrable functions so once you have when you expect so let us forget this thing and let us not bother because people might be not so comfortable with it let us just look into this shreve tells us that when i am expecting the fact that I expect that when n grows, the simple processes must somehow manage to imitate or be almost same as the given process. By this statement, we are actually meaning this statement, we are meaning that if we take over all the paths, we take the, the distance between these two. right the square of the distance then the expected value of the distance between these two points should be zero because remember in a random in a random setting we cannot be telling that it is exactly equal to zero this will be exactly zero we have to talk in terms of expectation because we do not know the outcomes so we have to only speak in terms of expectation so the expected distance so, this is this distance. So, as n grows, hmm, the expected distance should be going to 0, because the expected distance itself is a random variable. So, the, the sorry, the distance itself is a random variable. So, the expected distance between these two has to go to 0, that is the idea. So, by this we actually mean this. So, once we mean this, the definition of a standard integral standard eto integral from any point so would be limit So, it can happen for you take any t 
between 0 to t this will happen, this is the way I define. Now, why such a limit would exist? Remember that this is a stochastic process, I am taking a limit of another stochastic process. So, why should such a limit exist? Right. For every given t, why should such a limit exist? That can be answered by using the Ito isometry theorem and showing that this actually forms a Cauchy sequence, but we are not going to get into that sort of argument at all. Though I assume that you must, must be understanding this word Cauchy sequence and those who do not just forget it for the time being, just assume that okay, I can calculate it in some procedure. Now, what sort of properties would such an integral satisfy? You will be amused that all the properties that we learnt about the simple integrating the simple process would be applicable here. So, for example, that i t is continuous as a function of t for a given sample path. T for a given scenario omega, T for any given scenario omega. Number two, I t is f t measurable, that is I t is a stochastic process adapted to the filtration f t, which is the filtration associated with the Brownian motion. From now on, the whatever filtration we are talking about, the filtration would be associated with the Brownian motion. So, I t is f t measurable. The third property is linearity. So, if we take any two processes gamma and u, sorry delta and gamma, it can be proved that this is same as we are not going to prove this things just to announce you that these are the important properties. Uh, another third, uh, fourth most important property that I t is a martingale. Then of course, we should talk about the Ito isometry property. So, Ito isometry, you know what is Ito isometry, it is exactly the same, you basically copy what you know for that to this part. The Ito isometry says the second moment of this. And the last property, which is one of the most seminal properties, so I separate it, the quadratic variation of the Ito integral i t. Remember, Ito integral i t itself, the i t, the Ito integral, again I, I, this is the point I am want to state again and again, the Ito integral, the Ito integral. is a stochastic process. So, the major property that I want to state is 
that the quadratic variation accumulated up to time t is t that is independent of the path quite a Brownian motion type behavior sorry uh, not, not t uh, I am making a mistake here this is not Brownian motion type behavior sorry it is the same as same as the isometry. So, here you see so it gives you the standard this is the normal integration in terms of the variable u. So, this, this is a stochastic process for every omega you take you will get some thing. So, as omega change changes this will change. So, sorry it is I mean a mistake in my it is it is uh, it is path, path dependent actually. So, this is itself this quadratic variation itself is a stochastic process just writing in short and this is path dependent of course, not path independent I made a mistake sorry. So, these are the important properties that you learn about the Ito integral. So, these are the properties that you have to keep in mind of course, because of the time we cannot be proving each and every step. Now, what we will do, we will show you a simple example of how to compute the Ito integral and you will make a difference between computing the stochastic integral and the standard form of computing this integral. We will just uh, see. So, the next part remaining part of the class would actually consist of computing this integral. Please understand quadratic variation is a very, very fundamental thing here. So, our goal would be to compute so delta omega t we have replaced by the stand w t. So, what would be this? that is basically 0 to capital T x dx that will be x square by 2 that will be t square by 2 would be the answer if I just take it as a standard calculus integral, but you will soon see that t square by 2 is not the answer right. If I just put it x here and dx to be x square by 2 would be the answer x square by 2 0 to t, so t square by 2, but here you will see it is the quadratic variation which will get you an additional term with a term of that type and that makes stochastic integrals very different from the standard integrals of calculus. So, here we do it start to start start doing it step by step. So, we will calc we will construct for this this particular will make a construction of a sequence of simple processes. Now, we will choose n to be a very large integer. So, n is an integer. So, we will keep on increasing n, n is an integer. So, take an n and have for every step so, you divide every interval length is of the length t by n 0, t by n, 2 t by n and so and so forth till t, 3 t by n that is all, that is all. Now, as n becomes larger and larger these intervals become smaller and smaller. So, we will now define that for every interval how would we define the delta n t because when interval these intervals will become smaller and smaller and the length of these intervals that this will be larger these length, lengths would be smaller and smaller and smaller there will be more and more intervals of those given lengths. So, we will put w 0 it will be same equal to 0. So, it will be 0 if I 
W T by n means from here W T by n if So, w let, let me just put this is w n minus 1 t by n. So, you are just taking the this value itself. So, that is that is what it is. Sorry, that is t here. So, that is how I have constructed it. Now, the next question would be to know whether such a construction can prove this thing. that would become 0. So, what is the expected value of this? That is that is an important question. So, you can understand if you look at the picture very well, I would I advise you to draw the picture yourself, then that is the way you can learn you draw the picture this is the Brownian motion and here you have kept say 0 and then you have taken the T 1 value is here you have kept it here till say T 2 and T 2 value say is here started like this. So, in that way you will see that as n will become larger and larger, these straight lines will become smaller and smaller and smaller, become smaller and smaller and smaller. And so, you will have many of these straight lines as n becomes large and large, there will be infinitely many straight lines which would very hardly vary from the actual value that you see. So, this distance would anyway become smaller and smaller. So, if you take the difference for a given sample path and integrate over them, then the basically you are calculating now the distance between the areas under the curves for a given sample path square of the difference basically, not really area, but square of the difference. Then this would turn out to be 0. Of course, you can make a very uh, rigorous calculation right, of actually putting in the values breaking up 0 to t into these intervals and then actually looking into the difference w 0 minus w t when t is lying between this. So, the, the square of the difference you can write them down and then you can separately come and do the job. So, doing this will take a little bit of time. It is looks slightly obvious that you can easily do this, but this thing actually getting this thing done. Of course, one might think that why how I should be able to change put the expectation inside the integral. Yeah, 
you can do under certain circumstances you can switch expectations in integrals. So, you can switch the expectation integral then the things would be much more simpler then you would know that okay, the difference would be 0 there that their mean would be 0 etcetera etcetera and uh, the, sorry the variance would be <coughs> not the mean that will be the variance. So, variance would be uh, basically t by n and so and so forth. So, you would add those uh, quantities up right. So, you would add those quantities up and then you integrate with the n becoming larger and larger. So, the area would actually keep on falling. So, that is one way of thinking about it, but let us not think about it at this moment. Let us assume that we can show this that this will actually work. So, that this is a very good approximation which it is if you look at it pictorially which it, it is. You see in actual finance you really have do not have to bother too much about this sort of approximation nobody is going to ask you to do such uh, calculations, but okay, if we find time we will uh, really put up these sort of things up in the website. So, now what we have is the following. that is by definition. So, how do I define this delta you already know. So, it depends on so, it is from j equal to n. So, it is just using the values there. every step you have to calculate w j t by n and j it is 1 it is j is 0 it is 0 j it is 1 it is w t by n j is uh, basically you have to do this because these are the function points where you have the function values. you can easily understand these things. So, what have I done? So, when j is 0, it is 0 done finished and j is 1, it is w t by n into w 2 t by n minus w t by n of course, because over that particular interval it will take the value j t by n. Over this interval it will take the value j t j w this will take the value w t by n. So, that is exactly the interval that we are considering. So, and so forth. So, this is the sum. So, essentially now we have to compute this sum and then take the limit. So, our job now is to compute this sum. Now, because there is so much of clumsy things, we will consider some shorthands. We will write W j shorthand, let us do shorthand, some shorthand notations. In the shorthand notations, let us put W j to stand for W j t by n, so which means w j plus 1 would stand for w j plus 1 t by n. So, with this shorthand notation we will start the computation. Now, let me do the calculation. So, let us be we have to check up this, but let me start by doing the following calculation. You will see why I am doing this.
I will just go ahead and if uh, just let tell you a bit more about this, suddenly I remember it is a good way to talk about it. You see when n is becoming large, see the first part is very simple because when you put any t here, does not matter, here w it will be 0 and when n is becoming very, very large because w t is continuous in t, when n is becoming very, very large, this in this thing becomes very small, this interval. So, there is hardly a difference between t and delta and t, these values, very small difference and so this the square values would actually come down further and that is why their values would basically come down and, and the expectation would go towards 0. So, I want to calculate this, you will see why we are calculating this. This would allow us to give, get a fairly good, I mean, this will allow us to calculate this. It is just an opening of the brackets, nothing else. Once I do open the brackets, because w0 is 0, then so I just very important note that w0 is always 0. So, here because I am putting when I am putting j equal to 0, I get 1, and I am putting j equal to n minus 1, I am getting n. So, I can as well as write this expression as this particular expression as k is equal to 1 to n w k square. So, minus j equal to 0 to n minus 1 w j w j plus 1 plus half of summation j equal to 0 to n minus 1 w j square. So, now I will break this up into again two parts. I will break this up into w half w n square plus summation. Now, I will use the fact that w 0 is 0. So, what I will have if I break it up, I will have summation k equal to 1 to n minus 1 w k square, but adding the noting the fact that w 0 is 0, I can add w 0 square to it and right here this break it as k equal to 0 to n minus 1 w k square, it does not matter because w k is anyway 0. So, here is uh, what we have got, but now we will go and transfer our calculation to this part. So, we will do our calculation in this part. So, I will have half of summation j is equal to 0 to n minus 1 w j plus 1 minus w j square. I will again begin off from this part. So, what I will do? I will add sorry there is a half here. I will add this half and this half because they, they, these j's and k's are dummy indices. So, I will have half w n square. plus j is equal to 0. So, half plus half is added. So, it is 1 n minus 1 w j square minus summation j is equal to 0 to n minus 1 w j w j plus 1. So, basically I am getting half w n square plus summation j is equal to 0 to n minus 1 w j into w j minus w j plus 1. You see I have almost got this expression, but with a minus sign. So, what I will do is the following, or what is this? This is a quadratic variation term. So, I will take this part to this side and bring this thing to this side. 
So, my next job is the following. So, I will now write summation j is equal to 0 to n minus 1 w j w j plus 1 minus w j is equal to half w n square minus half summation j is equal to 0 to n minus 1 w j plus 1 minus w j square. This is actually the form of the quadratic variation of the Brownian motion you see. So, quadratic variation has come. So, basically now if I take the limit on both sides, what is this w n square w n square. So, what will I get w n t. So, if I put n here w j, so w n is w t. So, here it will be nothing but half w t square. So, if I take as n tends to infinity, this limit is nothing but the integral. So, I will get 0 to t w t d w t is equal to half w t square minus this limit assuming that all the limits that I am taking here I am assuming that okay, they are in the almost surely sense. You can even take them in the sense of limits in the sense of probability or convergence in p huh, that will also do. So, I am writing so this equality is in is a, is a convergence in probability. Essentially this is because we can actually show the quadratic variation goes in and can be shown in almost surely sense. So, these are actually in almost these equalities are always in almost surely sense because this is an stochastic process random variable at time t. So, this equality holds only everywhere except a set of measure 0. So, this is very very important to understand the set when I set of uh, null event I mean, if you throw away the null event it holds everywhere. So, what do you get? So, you get 0 sorry this is so there was a half here. So, what do you get 0 to t w t d t sorry w t d w t is equal to half w square t minus half of t. You see this half of t is an additional term because if I take a standard integral 0 to t x, uh, x square d x sorry x d x this is nothing but t square by 2 this is nothing but t square by 2 or if you take any integrals as 0 to t g t d g t. So, d g t is nothing but g dash t g t. 0 to t g t g dash t t t because this is the differential of t d t and this will simply give you half g square g square t. So, you see this is something very different and that is the crux of stochastic calculus that stochastic calculus the quadratic variation actually makes the difference the quadratic variation. The see essentially we were trying to compute the quadratic variation. So, this is some sort of a trick the quadratic variation cannot be forgotten when Brownian motion is in the game. So, we stop here and we will talk about it, it calculus uh, in the next Taylor theorem type things that you learn in standard calculus what is what is the meaning of Taylor's theorem in uh, stochastic calculus. So, we will learn about those things.